Welcome to Solo, the single person's guide to a remarkable life. Your host, a behavioral scientist and bachelor, talks to leading experts and successful singles about living solo and living well. Travel more, make things, sleep in when you want to. Here's the playbook for the person who is unapologetically unattached. Now, please welcome Dr. Peter McGraw. Welcome to Solo, the podcast that celebrates and destigmatizes single living. If you saw the recent media coverage of the solo movement, perhaps on the Today Show, this episode is a short primer on how I'm supporting singles. If you're a frequent listener, much of this will be familiar, and you probably can skip it. I'm Peter McGraw, a behavioral economist, business school professor, and lifelong bachelor. Every 12 years or so, I reinvent myself, professionally at least. I began my academic as a behavioral scientist, researching the interplay of judgment, emotion, and choice. I busted my ass as an assistant professor in the academic rat race, answering questions such as, can people feel happy and sad at the same time? And why does the TSA suck? I published a bunch of academic research. You probably shouldn't read it unless you have a problem with insomnia. My second act began just before tenure as I switched my interest to uncovering the causes of humor and the consequences of comedy. As the director of the Humor Research Lab, aka Hurl, I traveled the world, forced my friendship onto comedians, performed stand-up and improv, gave talks, launched a podcast, and wrote a less insomnia-solving set of academic papers as well as a couple books. It was a lot of fun, and it changed my life. Solo is my third act. This act has three categories of projects. The first is advocacy. I want to provide for the unapologetically unattached, a podcast, a book that I'm writing. I have a solo community, which you can sign up for at petermcgraw.org slash solo, an infrequent show on Fireside, and a bunch of solo clubs on the social audio app Clubhouse. The second category is events and public talks, including the recently launched Solo Salon, which was profiled in the Today Show segment. And then lastly, scholarly work, especially a single insight, The Science of Solos. I also offer keynotes. When I launched the episode nearly 100 episodes ago, I had a vague notion of where I was headed. I think you'll find that the sound quality improves with the more recent episodes, as well as I found a voice. Thank you for your patience as you work your way through those. The goal of the podcast is to help transform you from a single to a solo. That is to recognize the value of personal autonomy, whether you're single for now or forever. You see, solos don't see a romantic partner as completing oneself. You're already complete, but that doesn't mean that you're alone. There are many ways to connect to friends, family, community, and or a romantic or sexual partner, whether that partnership is traditional or not. Solos are also adventurous. They live on their edge and they embrace reinvention. I suggest checking out the episode Solo Thoughts 5, a new narrative in which I present for singles what I call the three R's, recognize, rebel, and reinvent. Some episodes bust the myths of single living, such as episode number two, The Science of Single Living with Bella DiPaolo, or perhaps you might want to check out the episode on attachment theory, where we talk about the damage that attachment theory does to the psyche of singles. Lastly, there's a really great scientific series on solitude, where we examine how spending time alone fosters personal growth, rejuvenation, reflection, and one of my favorite things to do, creative pursuits. Other episodes examine the norms that push people to partnerships, whether it's good for them or not. Two episodes stand out and have changed my perspective and my life. One is with Amy Guerin, and it's called Getting Off the Relationship Escalator, in which we talk about the commonly accepted high-status romantic sexual partnership that can crowd out other important relationships. And that episode sets the stage for understanding how people diverge from it in order to find relationships that are a better fit for where they are in life. Also, you might want to enjoy the two-part series on waiting, and it examines the divide that too many women face between being hopeful and hopeless as a result of the biology of reproduction. And finally, many of the episodes profile remarkable solos. If you want a spicy one to start, 
I suggest meeting who I call DTLA Josh in the episode Dating Friends and Sleeping with Strangers. It's one of my favorites. Along the way, you'll become familiar with many of the frequent sayings on the podcast, such as ask for what you want, create more than you consume, and we are starting a movement. Indeed. If you like what you hear, please rate and review the podcast and tell proud and not so proud single friends and family. Hits like the Today Show help, but most of the growth for the movement comes from search and word of mouth. Before I close, I want to tell you briefly about two exciting projects that you might find of interest. As I mentioned earlier, I'm hosting live events that I call the Solo Salon. In 18th century France, salons were private gatherings that discuss literature shared opinions about politics and the emerging sciences. Indeed, it was the age of enlightenment. For many people, salons were as close as you could get to a university education, and as they spread through Europe, they started to incorporate culture and entertainment such as music and poetry. The solo movement's bringing back the salon to celebrate proud singles, and there are a lot of you. There are 128 million adult singles in the United States. That's nearly half the adult population. More than a quarter of households have a single occupant. That number is half of adult residences in Stockholm are one person. And one in four millennials are projected to never marry. That's a Pew Center study. The salon gives people a chance to meet each other, but it's not a dating event. And why is that? Well, because half of American adult singles are not interested in dating or a relationship at the moment. It's a fun night of music, comedy, talks, interviews, and poetry sandwiched between two social hours. And as you get to know me, you know that I like to dress up. People arrive at the solo salon in cocktail attire. Lastly, one of the ways that marginal groups have gained acceptance is when businesses recognize that they have different needs. And to that end, I'm launching a single insight, the science of solos. As you may know, organizations are fixated on families, targeting them with products and promotions. But by doing so, they end up fighting for the same customer. And yet, singles like you are overlooked and undervalued. They have different needs. And when organizations recognize this large, diverse group, they can help escape the competition. So a single insight is a resource for managers, marketers, entrepreneurs, and salespeople. For example, I recently wrote an article that details how often people do things alone. You won't be surprised to know that singles do things alone more than partner people. And the businesses should better foster welcoming these singles into their retail spaces. Okay, that's it for now. I have some exciting episodes in the queue. Thank you for joining the solo movement. Let's get started. Thank you for listening to Solo, the single person's guide to a remarkable life. For more about our guests and show notes, go to petermcgraw.org. Please subscribe and share with your single friends. 